Hello everyone, Scott from the World Foundation here and welcome back to another Zero Hour video. Now today we are going to be doing something different. We are going to imagine how a certain feature could look like in Zero Hour if it was implemented. How it would work, how players would use it and so on. Now before we start, I just want to make a few things clear. This video is not about telling M7 production how or what they should be doing to improve Zero Hour. If they like what they see in this video and they want to use it as an inspiration, that's fine. If the thing actually what we see in this video wouldn't fit in zero hour, that's fine as well. I'm sure M7 production has plenty of ideas and plans to improve the game moving forward. So this is more of an exercise to be creative more than anything else. So with that being said, let's get started. Coordinating with your team is really important in zero hour. It's not always required, but if you manage to do it most of the time, it's easier to win games, whether you're playing PvP or Co-op. Therefore, communication is extremely important. Shoot, move, communicate. But many people do not like using a microphone to achieve that. There are countless researches out there proving that forcing players to use a microphone generates too much competitive anxiety and therefore impacts player retention. Overwatch, for instance, has been suffering from that for years, especially in top competitive tiers where even if everyone is using a microphone, there is just too much toxicity with sexist and racist comments. The team working on Valorant has already announced they are working on a system to review voice chants to battle toxicity. This is a business trying to battle something that is impacting its brand reputation and product KPIs, one of them being the most important, revenue and profit. Apex Legends did a great job at improving the aspect of online competitive games with interactive pre-made communication, and I feel this is something that would fit well in a game like Zero Hour. So I decided to imagine my own communication widow. Essentially, you will hold the key to display a floating interactive menu with different options. Using one of those options will ping a request to the rest of my team and trigger a voice line. My first design was really basic and it would only include the most typical communication options you would need as an attacker or defender. And I thought, yeah, it's okay, but I think having such a basic menu would probably be frustrating since it doesn't really cover any of the tricky situations you often face in Zero Hour. So I did to that first design. I had this design that still had important team communication options surfaced first, like go, hold position, I need support, suspect spotted, and so on. And then uh, there would be two tabs with more sub-actions, tactic and information. So when clicking on tactic, the player would get all the different kinds of actions you would normally think of when preparing your breach. Stuff like open the door, slightly open the door and breach, open the door, then flash, then breach, or throw a flash or a frag grenade here and so on place the UDC here, place a C2 charge and whatnot. And the information tab would include communication options related to specific situations, mostly when you need to raise awareness of something important that you spotted, like, hey, there is a C4 charge here, there is a door trap, there is a spy camera, or there is a camera here, and so on. At first, I thought this was a good design, and I thought I had covered everything, but then I realized that this design mostly, if not only, worked for attackers, and if I wanted to have this work for defenders, I would have to switch things around all the time, and it would be a very bad user experience. Ideally, a menu barely changes, or it doesn't change at all, regardless of the side or game mode you are playing. When playing, things go fast, you need to be fast as well. So when you have to deal with menus that change all the time, it's much harder to remember everything and you have a lot more things to remember as well. So I knew this first design didn't work, so I went back to my drawing board and came up with a second design that looked slightly better. This time the idea was that I had enough options to cover all situations. So this time the menu would probably provide access to more general options and four main categories that would be attackers, defenders, general and tactic. All the basic communication options such as go, hold your position, I need support and so on would be in the general category. And because it's a category and it works kind of like a folder, it's easier to have more options there and keep the menu neat and tidy. So I did stuff like uh, the path is blocked because of the procedural pro placement, objective location and so on. And I think all of those options work for both the attacking and 
the defending side and it wouldn't have to move depending on the side you're playing on so that's pretty good then the tactic tab will basically only include four options at first when you open it the first two options will be for you to inform your teammate or ask your teammate that you need a flash or a frag grenade to be thrown at a specific location if you had the item in your inventory however it would inform your team that you are going to throw one but if you didn't have the item in your inventory the game will use a different voice line that basically asked your teammate to throw one for you the two other options would work differently if you clicked on them when aiming at a door it would basically ask a teammate to open or half open the door for you however you can still hover over one of the options and it would add steps to that request some sort of like adding orders to it so basically you could just go with open or half open the door for me if you clicked on the option but if you wait and you put the cursor on it it will deploy more options and then you can do stuff like open door then throw a flash then breach together and so on now the attackers and the defenders categories will only contain all the things you will need to communicate to the rest of your team whether you're attacking or defending and basically if you're on the attacker side you can only use the attacker category and if you are on the defending side you can only use the defenders category now to give you an example if you are on the attacking side and you decide to use the attackers category you will be able to use stuff that will enable you to ask for let's say certain utilities to be used at specific location and you can only use them if one of your teammates actually has the utility so if you ask your teammates please place udc here the option is only available to you if one of your teammates has the udc you can also use it to warn your teammates of specific things like hey there's a c4 charge here there's a door trap here there's a spy camera here and so on there are obviously quite a few mistakes in my designs for instance a fourth iteration should probably include options for you to accept or deny a request the record switch option should probably be in tactic or in general because it's not just the attackers who can use it there are quite a few things I haven't covered too, like how other team members will know that there is a request, how do they see that? And I was thinking maybe there could be a 3D icon on the HUD that you could target the icon and then you could open the menu and uh, select uh, I accept or uh, deny and that would kind of like, you know, make the icon change or disappear and so on and so on. But then I was thinking about it and I was like, that would be adding even more elements to the HUD and I don't think that's good. I think it would definitely break the immersion of the game. It would definitely make it hard for players who like playing without the HUD, like myself. And I just don't think it would make the game authentic anymore. I just think it would make it too easy to communicate at this point, you know? So I was thinking maybe I mean, we definitely need something to let players know where the requests are coming from. And I think that could be done on the tactical map. I think this is where we could see more details and icons added directly generated by the communication menu to the tactical map. So you would find the location and accept the request and so on from the tactical map directly. The great thing about system like this is that it uses pre-generated text and audio files that everybody can use or at least everybody that can understand the languages supported by the game it's only two right now but in the future i'm confident more languages will be added to the game as we get closer to leaving the early access phase of the game anyway i think it was fun to play around and prototype designs to imagine how such a system would look like and work in a game like zero hour let me know in the comments below what you think about it and if maybe this is something you would love to see added to the game in the future i hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please consider leaving a like and to subscribe to support the channel my name is Carl Hartrod of the world foundation and i mostly cover authentic or tactical shooter games as well as immersive survival games thanks again for watching and i will see you next time